Today on The Joy of Editing, we're going to take a first look at the latest update for Topaz Photo AI. This is version 2.4.1. Stay tuned. Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. Let's get a first look at the latest update for Topaz Photo AI, version 2.4.1. The first new feature I want to show you is what Topaz have added when using Photo AI as a Photoshop plugin. I already duplicated my background layer. I'm just going to come up here to Filter and come to Topaz Labs and Topaz Photo AI. I'll get it launched and I'll show you the new Photo AI plugin feature. And here we are inside of Topaz Photo AI. Autopilot has just completed. And you can see it's removed noise and sharpened. And now let me show you the new Photo AI Photoshop plugin feature. If you come and click on Add Enhancement, you didn't have upscale before when you launched Photo AI as a plugin. Now it's not really upscaling the image, it's keeping it at the original size, but it will enhance the image. So if I click on Upscale, Notice that there is no option to upsize this, but it does enhance it. I just wanted to point that out. I'm going to close this for now and delete up scale because I really don't want to enhance this image. But it's nice to have that enhancing ability if we need it. Now, if you're like me, you'll like this next addition. If you click on sharpen and we click on selection, you'll notice all is selected by default. So that's good news. We need that. Now notice here, auto select, it's set for all. And like I said, this is what they've changed. By default, it is set for all. And if I click on the drop down, it was set at default to none before, which was kind of dumb in a way because there was no sharpening applied. You had to get in here and change it to all or choose what you want. In my case, I want the subject. So I'll click on subject. And just like before, we have tool types. But now they've added this drop down menu for the tools. It just makes this interface a little neater. So if we click the drop down, we have the super pixel, the regular brush, as well as the object selection tool right in there. But it's a little bit neater, like I said. And you'll find this in other various enhancements inside of Photo AI. Let me go and click on controls now. Now here's something else that is new. If we come up and click on the menu, Topaz Photo AI and come and click on Preferences. Click on Sharpen to open up the Sharpen Preferences. And you'll note they added this back to Photo AI. Default selection, it's set by Photo AI to all by default, but you could change it to any default setting you want. For instance, subject, background, portrait, landscape, or sky. So that's really nice, especially if you're doing some batch processing. So that's nice. So if you change it, you do have to click apply. But I'm glad they added this feature back. I'm still inside of the sharpen module. Now remember, you can move this around. You can click and drag this panel anywhere that you want. And I like the settings autopilot has given me. I'm just going to click close here because now I want to show you another new feature. Notice this sharpen enhancement. Do you see now it says subject? Anytime you make a selection, it's going to let you know what that selection is in a subheading. In this case, it's the subject. But it doesn't stop there. If you hover over a subheading like subject, you'll notice you can see the red overlay over the flower as well as up here in the little viewer. Whenever you hover over subject, you can see what's selected. Now, if you didn't select one of those auto selected features like subject, background, portrait, so on and so forth, if you did a custom selection, it'll say custom here. And again, if you hover over custom, you'll see what you've selected. So that's really a nice feature. By the way, if you don't like the color of the overlay that you're getting, you could click on any one of the enhancements and change the display color. You could click right on this red swatch right here. And let's say we want magenta. So I'll click on magenta and I'll click OK. And then you'll notice right here, opacity is set for 50%. You could change that. You could click here and give it a different number. Let's type in three zero and I'll type my return key. So now that's 30%. So if it's too strong for you, you can reduce that. Now, once you change the display color and the opacity percentage for any one of the different enhancements, it will change for all of them. So you only have to change it on one and it'll respect that for all the different enhancements. I'm done here with sharpening, so I'll just click close. Now, note, if you don't see a subheading, like under remove noise, you don't see a subheading, and if I hover here, you don't see any overlay. That just means that all of the entire image is getting removed noise. Now, let me show you something. Let me click on the remove noise enhancement. And as you can see, selection is active. I could click on controls 
to go back to the controls. But let me click on selection and you'll notice auto select is set to all. And you can see the magenta overlay over the entire image. Let me show you something interesting. Notice this remove noise enhancement. Watch what happens when I come to auto select and choose none. You notice now it says nothing selected. So it lets you know if you have an enhancement out here with no selection whatsoever, it's going to let you know nothing selected, which means it's not being used. So you could either use it by opening up this enhancement and changing it to a selection you want. In my case, I'm going to change it back to all or else if you're not using it, just delete it. Let me go ahead and close up, remove noise. Here's another new feature for enhancement hotkeys. Command or control K will open up the multi-use panel here. And then you could go ahead and select any one of these enhancements you want. Or you could also use now, this is new. You can use your down arrow to move down or your up arrow to move up. And notice you see sharpen is highlighted. Now just type your return key and that'll add another sharpen adjustment. So that's new. And of course you can always just click on add enhancement to open up the enhancements and then just click on them with your mouse as well. So either way works. I don't really need this sharpen enhancement, so I'll click on the trash can to get rid of it. I just have a couple more new features to show you and I can't show you them here in the plugin in Photoshop because one deals with the crop tool and you can't use the crop tool as a plugin in Photoshop. You can use it in Photoshop if you're, if you're running Photo AI from the automate menu in Photoshop. So let me go ahead and just click save to Photoshop to get us back in Photoshop. And next I'll open up Photo AI as a standalone app and show you a few more features. And now I'm using Photo AI as a standalone app and I have this image of some happy people because what I wanted to show you is this new feature with recover faces. Now I've selected all their faces, but notice the recover faces enhancement. You notice the subheading of five faces selected. Whenever you've selected faces if you hover over the subheading you'll be able to see the faces that are selected so that's something new and i wanted to show that to you now the last couple of things i want to show you deals with a cropping tool so let me click on the cropping tool the first thing i want to show you you see the little hand where i can move the image inside of the frame if you hover outside of the image you notice my cursor turns to a curve with an arrow on both sides of it. That lets you know that we can go ahead and rotate the image. The cursor now shows differently when you're outside of the frame. Now the last thing I want to show you, and I don't know if I can really show it properly because I think there's a bug. I'm using a Mac. If you're having this issue, let me know in the comments section below. But if you hover over dimensions here, you notice you have the original size, pixel size, and the output size. Now I haven't done anything yet, so nothing has changed there. But let's say I'm on aspect ratio. Now if you click the drop down, you have different aspect ratios you can use. I'm just gonna leave it on the original aspect ratio locked. I can go ahead and adjust the crop. Now notice the width and the height. Notice these numbers. Here's a bug for me. When I change this, these numbers don't always, see that went to 119 and 80? That is incorrect. So those numbers should change for you whenever you move this. This is a bug. And the other thing I think is a bug, if I hover over dimensions, nothing changes here. It says original 7081 by 4760, and I got the same number for the output. So nothing is changed there, and I think it should. So that's a problem. This has got to be an obvious bug. So Topaz, you need to fix this. But for now, I'll click apply. So let's say that's my crop, but let me just crop in a little bit more. I'll click apply. And now just for the sheer fun of it, let me go ahead and click on the crop tool again and notice these numbers here, 6494 for the width and 4365 for the height. But let me hover over the dimensions and you'll notice that those numbers are off. The original was 7081 by 4760, but now it says the crop is 6446 by 4333 for the crop as well as the output. But you notice these numbers down here do not correspond. So there's a bug here. And let me know in the comments section below, please, if you're having that same bug. And don't forget, you can always click on feedback here and let Topaz know, which I will do as well. There it is, everyone. The latest update for Topaz Photo AI version 2.4.1. I love the direction Photo AI is going. I think it's getting better and better. It has a bug 
in the crop tool. At least it does for me. Let me know in the comments section below if it does for you. Hey, if you enjoyed today's first look, please give it a like and share it with your friends. And if you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe. Click that bell notification icon. Click all so that you receive all notifications. And then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll get notified about it. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today on the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. And I will see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.